What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a more lengthy video and then I'm going to go over basically my video, photo, YouTube setup here, everything I use on a daily basis for this channel, for video, photo editing, and also just as general daily use. Uh, I finally got it all in the basement. We are expecting baby number two in the summer of 2022. So this will be a good starting point for our setup for 21, 22. Uh, and it may give you an idea of some of the stuff that may you want to look at purchasing or not purchasing. I'll kind of go through uh, everything I have here. I have a long list. I actually wrote it down on multiple pages because I wanted to be as thorough as possible to try to help out whoever I can out there. So first, let's start with the desk. This is the Apex Elite 71 inch desk. I've had it for, I wanna say over around 10 years, but I've had it for at least five plus years. Uh, I bought it when this company was fairly new, so it cost me about $650. Currently it's running about seven to 800. It's a little bit different uh, with the controls and everything, but this is a solid desk for the price point. It is not all walnut, any type of, it's all fake wood, uh, but it is a very solid desk. It's been disassembled and reassembled at least seven times and it's very heavy, very industrial. So if you're just looking at a good budget mid-range sit to stand desk that's going to last a long time i would highly recommend this it has no storage underneath and it doesn't have any programmable for uh the sit and stand height but uh for the price point it is a solid deal uh, i don't know if i would get the white in it but overall it is a very solid desk that i would highly recommend to anyone out there maybe wait till the prices go down a little bit everything's higher now because of covid and supply and demand so uh, but i would highly recommend this desk for anyone that wants a sit stand desk uh just you can you can do the uh, storage under underneath get a cheap basket from ikea and that solves that problem uh so going from the desk to the chair i've done a review on this chair multiple times this is the uh, herman miller sow chair basically it was the cheapest herman miller chair i could get I paid around $6.25 for it when it came out, but again, it's more expensive now because of COVID and supply and demand, uh, but it is a solid chair. It took a little convincing for my wife to purchase it, but previously I had a Staples chair, which cost about $200 and it was junk within the six months. This I've had for almost a year now and it feels super solid. It's very comfortable. You can just tell that it is going to last. I believe their chairs come with 10-year warranties, so I think this will be the chair that I keep probably for the rest of my life. I didn't want a big chair, uh, so this is a little bit smaller. I'm not very big, 5'11", six, around 6 foot, well, 5'10", 5'11". Now I feel like I get shorter as I get older. Uh, but it is a solid chair for the price point. Uh, that's it. Highly recommend that. Uh, so now let's go to, let's actually go to the things that are around the desk. First, I will talk about my desktop and it is in, uh, there's some things I'd like to upgrade in this. I'll talk about that as I go, uh, but it's in the Be Quiet. Uh, I think it's the 500 DX case, one of their base, pure base series. Uh, it's a great case if you're wanting to focus on good airflow, good air cooling. It does have some LED lights already built into it, which I think are nice. Uh, you can also shut them off so you're not locked into them being on all the time. And they come with good uh, pure wing, be quiet, pure wing fans, 140 millimeters. Uh, I've replaced all the fans in this with Noctua fans, mainly because I had four laying around and I just prefer uh, Noctua fans. I think they're the, one of the better fans out there. Uh, for the actual components of the desktop, I have the Intel 10850K, which is a 10 core, uh, two year old generation processor now. I think it's the 10th gen. Uh, it's a solid processor, especially for the price point. You can get them for around 300 or less used now since they're on the, the, the new Alder Lake CPU. So if you can find one for that price point, I think it's a solid deal. This thing will do just about anything. It struggles a little bit with, with editing C-Log and S-Log, but besides that, it's a really, really solid uh, investment. Graphics card EVGA 980 Ti. I've had this for... Uh, a little over three years now, I bought it from uh, uh, NVIDIA's B-Stock outlet as a refurbished. That's generally where I get most of my uh, graphics cards at because I'd like to not spend that much money. I paid $250 for it, which I would like to upgrade to a 3080, but GPU prices are way too high. Uh, 980 Ti's are selling used between $350 and $400 on eBay, which is crazy because it's like a, like a five-year-old graphics card, uh, but it's... Still works really well. Uh, I don't game 
that much and it works well for that. I mainly use it for video editing so uh, it's something that I'd love to upgrade but not anything that's that's dire need. Uh, motherboard is the Gigabyte Z570? 60? I believe. Pro version. Um, I got the Pro version mainly because it had more M.2 slots and more fan headers. I have a lot of fans in my case. Uh, I think I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five fans and then two on the CPU cooler, which the CPU cooler is the Noctua D15. Uh, it's a Chromax Black Edition. I originally had water cooling in this, but I went with the actual air cooling because I don't want to touch this machine. I don't want to mess with it. Water cooling, I feel like you just have a risk of the pump dying. Maybe it'll leak. Who knows? I feel like they're just not built as well as they used to be. So I went with the Noctua D15, threw it in there, never going to touch it again, except for I have to reapply some thermal paste or change that out uh, every couple years as it goes. Uh, and then I bought the cheapest RAM I could get, Corsair Vengeance, uh, 16 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz for the speed. Probably one of the cheaper RAM kits out there, and I'll probably get another set of this so I have 32 gigs, because currently I use about 14 to 15 when I'm editing uh, C-Log. Uh, it just eats up a lot of your RAM, so I'll probably uh, upgrade that as I go. And power supply, it's a Seasonic 650 watt gold semi-modular. I will only buy Seasonic uh, power supplies, so uh, I've had it for years now. So I could probably upgrade to like an 8, 8, 50, 850 watt or 750 watt if I got like a 3080 or 3080 Ti, but that's down the line. I don't plan on doing that. So that gets that out of the way. Uh, let's talk a little bit about lighting. So I have my Philips Hue lights back here. I got one here and one there. I've had those for a while now. Uh, I think they're probably one of the better brands to get. And then I also have this Pixel G2S. Uh, this is a light and a battery pack. So it works pretty well. It's fairly cheap. Basically, you just turn it on. There's all kinds of different modes with it. So you can do different colors. You can do different settings. It has a strobe light mode, which I never use. Uh, but it has all kinds of different settings. Uh, and I think for the price point, it's a pretty good deal. I think it was under $50 when I bought it. And it actually does really well with charging stuff. So you can charge things with it uh, in a pinch. I don't do that, but you could down the line if you wanted. And this is attached to the Obin, the TT100. This is something I bought originally because I thought I could stick my camera on it and use it. It's just not bulky enough. Uh, even when I had the Sony a7 III, which is a lighter camera, then the one I'm using, which I'll talk about that uh, later on down the line, uh, it's okay. But if you don't don't expect it to hold your your mirrorless camera, unless maybe it's like a Sony 6000 series, uh, you may be able to do that. But it uh, it's well built. It's nice. Holds my light. That's the only thing I use it for. So I wouldn't spend your money on that uh, unless you're really dire to do that. Uh, rest of the lighting. So. The main light I have here, it is on the newer C, C stand. Uh, it cost around, I think I paid $89 for it on sale. It's a very solid C stand. Um, newer is a just an off brand that's, that's, that's on Amazon. Uh, it's a very solid C stand, so I would highly recommend it for anyone that is having problems with a light, any type of tripod light stand. If you need something a little heavier, this one I think I have it down below. I'll try to put links to all of this stuff below, but it's solid. I mean, it is a, a very well-built stand, uh, arrived in, in perfect condition, so I don't have any problems there. And then we have the Do Godox SL60W. This is also a more budget-oriented light. Uh, I couldn't afford any of the aperture lights, uh, and this one does a really good job. It goes on sale frequently for $85, $90. It's probably on sale now for Black Friday. So that's something that I would highly, highly recommend. It comes with a nice little fancy remote here. I don't know if it will focus on that. It likes focusing on your face, but uh, it comes with a nice little fancy remote here, which works really well. Uh, I really like that. Uh, it can get a little loud at times, the fan. So it does have a fan that cools it, but I haven't had any issues with it. It is super bright. I have it at like 38% right now and usually never go above that. Uh, if you do the light below 30%, it does do a little flickering effect in your videos, so you kinda gotta watch out for that. And I splurged on the light dome, it's the Aperture uh, Light Dome Mini 2, which is 
not the most cheap light dome out there, but uh, I like that you can disassemble it and assemble it very, very easily. It's well built, well worth the money. It's something I will keep for the rest of my life. So that's uh, for that. So now that we got everything, oh, storage. Now let's do the desk. We'll do the storage layer. So for the desk, uh, we have multiple things that are sitting on. I usually always have a pad. Granted, this is a Christmas one, but that's what we have later on on a pen just to write stuff down. Uh, so that's something I usually keep there. Uh, for the actual keyboard and mouse, uh, this is the Tofu. This is the 65% uh, from KBD fans. It has Zillio version 2, 67 gram switches. I know they're not lubed, but KBD fans then do a switch lubing at that time. So I'm probably upgrade to a 75% keyboard here soon and then uh, kind of get the my more lifelong keyboard, uh, but this thing is solid. It's a solid built keyboard. Uh, I would highly recommend it. The Zillio switches are, for me, I think perfect. I really like the feel of them. Previously, I just had Cherry MX switches, but it is very, very solid. Uh, it has an all aluminum base. It's just a very, very, I would highly recommend any of the Tofu or the KBD fan uh, keyboards. I've had really good luck with that. They take a couple weeks to come in. I think they can't come from Thailand. I'm not positive, but I've had really good luck with, with ordering stuff from there. And I have some max key keycaps on there, uh, which I like. Uh, there's double shot, PBT, nothing fancy. I believe they're on sale for about $20 right now on KBD fans. That, that, if, Check their out, uh, that, them out uh, frequently uh, for any type of sales. For my mouse, uh, this is a Logitech M720. I've had this for a while. It's a very cheap, budget-oriented mouse. This is something I'll probably upgrade soon. Uh, it's served its purpose really well. I've never changed the battery in it yet, so um, it's very, very... It, it's a little small for my hand, but overall I'm really, I've been really happy with it for the price point. So. If you're looking for a budget-oriented mouse, I think that's the way to go. So for my monitor, it's a very long name, LG 326K 50TW, I believe. It's a very budget-oriented LG monitor. I paid $300 for it at Costco. Usually runs around $350. It's under a different name now because the monitor is about four years old. Uh, fairly color accurate. It's not the most color accurate monitor out there um it's only 60 hertz it's not a gaming monitor it's just a 32 inch 4k monitor you could use it for video or photo editing uh in a pinch if you're not doing a real pro grade work um but it's it's a solid monitor for the price point the stand is where it dies the stand is awful so i have it on a monitor arm which we'll talk about next there's no USB-C, so if you want a USB C and USB C hub You'll probably have to pay the 450 point for one of their ultra fine, their budget oriented ultra fine monitors, but it's a solid monitor for the price point, especially for $300. Um, I prefer a two monitor setup. So if you're looking for a two monitor setup, I'd maybe look at a 27 inch. I think 32 inches is just a little too big for that. Uh, and the monitor arm it's on, this is also something I'd highly recommend, but I don't even know how to pronounce the name on it. I'll get you H-U-A-N-U-O. I basically just searched and got lucky on Amazon. Uh, it's a pretty good monitor arm. Uh, fits well on my desk, easy to install. It was around $50. The only negative is that it, I think it does have gas springs in it. And when I first installed it without tightening anything, I about cut my hand off. So you do have to be careful with installing stuff that has gas springs in it because when it goes and clamps down on something, it's not gonna stop. Uh, so that's it for that. Uh, the other things that are on my desk, I don't have a laptop right now. I recently sold my 14 inch MacBook Pro because it was just too much for me. Uh, so my wife has a 13 inch 2016 MacBook Pro. Uh, she doesn't use it very often, so we're just kind of dual using it. I am planning on getting a Lenovo X1 Yoga whenever I find one, uh, one of the ThinkPads, uh, whenever I find a refurbished one that uh, fits my needs in the outlet. Mainly because you can get them for $7,800 pretty easily, and that's all I need uh, for a laptop. Uh, and then I also have, uh, I don't even know what year it is, 2018, 11-inch MacBook Pro Generation 1. This is a recent purchase I got, mainly for long trips for when we're traveling with our 18-month-old, uh, almost 19-month-old. Uh, he doesn't do well in car seats, so this entertains him for a little bit until he falls asleep or 
Uh, usually we only let it run for about 25 minutes and then it turns off. Uh, and so it works pretty well. It was a little bit of a splurge. It was $520. I bought it from the Apple Outlet. Uh, I hate paying full price for Apple stuff, so I usually get a lot of my stuff from the Outlet or a third party, but it's in a cheap case. I don't know, like a cheap knockoff folio case I got on Amazon, but I've been really happy with it. Uh, probably get a cheap keyboard to hook up to it, but that's been... I usually have that on my desk most of the time just because I don't have my phone down here, so I can still get my iMessages and anything else. It's just an easy, easy tool to use. Uh, so now let's I have a plant that I got at Kroger for $10. And it does pretty well down here. I don't get a lot, lot of light down here in the basement, so this is a plant that does pretty well with a little light. Uh, I've had it for about a year and it hasn't died, so that's... And, and cats don't eat these type of plants. So if you get these little pokey plants, our cat, this is about the only plant that he does not eat. Uh, so now audio. So this is something I recently upgraded to. I'll keep probably, probably for the rest of, probably for at least 10 years. So I have the Sennheiser HD 600s. Uh, originally I was looking at some of the Bear Dynamic. I would have loved to have the 1990. Uh, DT, whatever they are, but they're about $550. The HD 600s cost me uh, a little over $200. I get a discount with Sennheiser through work. They happen to be on sale. They are very balanced, warm headphones, which I like. Uh, you don't need a lot to drive them either, so they're really, really good. Uh, they sound okay not being uh, hooked up to an amp or anything. But, uh, for the price point, they're very comfortable, well-built, detachable cables. I really couldn't think I could go wrong, so I went with that. Uh, and they hooked up to the Shit Magni three or Magni three and Modi three, which is uh, Shit's uh, it's S C H I I T. So if you're trying to look that up, it's not how you would uh, originally uh, sound it out. Uh, they're hundred dollars a piece. Great amp and DAC will power anything. If you don't want to spend a lot of money on an amp and DAC, that is is what I would recommend. Uh, it's a very very good investment. Uh, if you're wanting any type of, I would call it pro-grade audio. Uh, they look good, they're well-built, they're small, they stack easily on each other. Uh, there's really not much to complain about with that for the $99 price point a piece. So they're around $245 because I did buy their RCA cable to hook them together because it's also another well-built uh, product. Probably not worth $20, but uh, it's very, very good. Uh, what else? So I have an iPhone 13 Pro uh, standard version. I don't know where it's at. It's upstairs somewhere, but that's what I use as my daily driver. Had a Pixel phone before, but uh, honestly, I missed iMessage. Now that they have a 120 hertz refresh rate screen, I switch back to them. And it's probably what I'll keep for probably the next four or five years. I don't switch phones very often or try not to. Uh, so uh, I've been pretty happy with it. It has Apple Care so far. 18 month old accidentally breaks it or I break it. I don't like using cases. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, so now the most recent thing I probably got that I'm really glad I purchased, but I don't notice it that much is we recently bought a NAS. So we have a Synology a DS420 Plus. I don't believe they make this any more new, at least I couldn't find it. Uh, you could probably get it somewhere, maybe B&H or something. Uh, and I have four, four terabyte, uh, Seagate's Iron Wolf uh, hard drives. It was the one that was recommended that works well with this. I originally looked at some of the, the WD Reds from Western Digital, but uh, it says they weren't compatible, at least the ones that I were looking at, so I just went with these. I've been really happy with it. We have almost 11 terabytes of storage, 10.4 for all our photos, videos. I have a ton of photos now of our little ones, so they do take up file sizes, uh, especially if you shoot them in RAW, even if you, you know, convert them to JPEGs after you edit them. That's a lot of storage. I don't think we're using that much now, maybe 900 gigabytes, but we will have storage for the next 25 years, uh, maybe even beyond. Uh, and it's just a good, safe backup. I've really been happy with Synology software uh, with controlling that. You can you know, control it from the web. You can download. It's just a very simple, easy process once you get it set up. Uh, so if you're if you if you have four or five hard drives in your system, I would highly recommend just getting an NAS. It's going to be expensive, but it's going to give you 
a more long-term backup. Uh, that way we don't have to subscribe to any type of uh, file share uh, system like Google Photos or Google Drive or uh, Apple iCloud. Uh, you don't have to pay a fortune for that type of stuff. So I'd highly recommend that if you have a ton of, if you have more than two or three hard drives in your system, it's probably time to start looking for a NAS. Uh, and that's it. This is shot on the Canon R6. This is the 35 millimeter 1.8. This is their STM line. They're more budget oriented lenses, which are good for basically for video. So they have a stepping motor, so it, it pulls really well. And I also have the Canon 50 millimeter 1.2 L lens. This is way overkill for my needs, but uh, I love and hate this lens. I love the lens for the photos I get out of it. I don't like 50 millimeter focal length, but they don't make a 35 1.2 yet supposed to be the release this year but I wouldn't count on that uh, so it's a very nice lens kind of showcase how lens focuses so it has a good nice pull there it looks it's very smooth so any of the STM uh, lenses for the the Canon uh, RF mount are great for video and I have the Hasden something something 15 shotgun microphone I'm not completely happy with it I prefer like maybe one of the uh, Rode wireless ones, uh, the lap, the one have the lap mics, uh, the wireless go, whatever you call them. Uh, but it's okay, it does its job. It's not the best microphone out there. I'd probably look for a different one. Uh, and I have an Oben tripod it's connected to. Also haven't been super happy with it, mainly because it's not tall enough. So if I do any type of outside work, I basically have to be sitting down to take video of it. And that's it. I have a, sh a shelf back here that I bought from Wayfair. It's not real wood, but it feels solid. Uh, so I've had good luck with that. Uh, but that's it. That's my setup going into 2022. Uh, it's got me through 2021. I think I have everything where I want it. Uh, I do need a laptop, so I will, I'm just waiting. I only have an $800 budget. I do not want to spend a lot on a laptop that I use mainly upstairs to play around with on the internet in the morning or check check our bank account, just do whatever on, not anything, do a little light photo and video editing, but not anything major. But this is basically where I've done all my YouTube videos at is in this setting. So that's it. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, leave them below. Sorry, this is a long video. I will try to put links up for all this, but that takes a ton of time. So I don't know if I'll get to all of them, but I'll put as many of them up as I can. Um, most everything I would highly recommend. Uh, that's it. Comments, questions, leave them below. I already said that. I do that a lot. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. Uh, have a good rest of the day, weekend, whatever is out there. Have a good holiday. Hopefully get this up.